Hey guys, this is Viola. Today I'm excited to introduce an exceptional product, the VDC48 Video Transmission System. This device is designed with superior anti-multipass and anti-interference capabilities, ensuring high reliability and stability with less than 10 milliseconds of latency. It operates across a wide temperature range from minus 40 degrees to plus 75 degrees, making it perfect for unmanned vehicles, robots, unmanned boats and drones. You may be wondering what specific features does it offer? I'll be walking you through each of them in this video. And without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So first of all, the VDC48 features a multi-interface design that's truly flexible. This device is equipped with dual Ethernet ports and four serial ports. It supports a variety of internet standards, including RS-232, TTL, RS-422, and SBUS. Specifically, serial port 1 and 2 are sized at either RS-232 and or TTL, depending on hardware configuration out of the box. Serial port 3 utilizes as RS-422 interface. As for serial port 4, it can be configured as either SBUS or TTL through the web backend. Furthermore, the mapping between remote and local serial ports on VDC48 is highly customizable. By default, remote serial port 1 corresponds to local serial port 1, remote serial port 2 to local serial port 2, and remote serial port 3 to local serial port 3. However, users can configure different mapping relationships according to their specific needs. Enabling any local serial ports to communicate with any remote serial ports. This flexibility allows for easy adaptation to various operational requirements. For example, through the master station's web interface, you can modify the configuration into the third column for serial port 3. By changing the mapping from remote serial port 3 to local serial port 3, by remote serial port 1, corresponding to the local serial port 3. It means that input from slave station serial port 1 will correspond to the output at master station serial port 3. Essentially, this setup allows for internal conversation from RS-232 or TTL input to RS-422 output with the module. Now, we're going to do the range test. First, we connect the fiberglass antenna and then the directional antenna to the master station's antenna interface and raise both tripods to their highest position. Next, we connect the two small fiberglass antenna and the antenna extension cable to the slave station's antenna interface. Then, we power up the master station, the slave station, and the gimbal camera. Bring up the web interface for both master and slave stations. Our range test can officially begin now. Currently, the slave station is gradually moving away from the master station as we monitor through the web and gimbal camera views. By observing the web interface, we can see that as the distance gradually increases, the transmission power also rises, but the data stream decreases. Both the RSSI and SNR are decreasing too. Additionally, we can monitor the gimbal camera views to observe if there's any lag. As we can see, the VDC48 supports adaptive bitrate streaming. This system smartly adjusts its stream size and channel modulation in real time based on signal quality. Essentially, its internal algorithm adaptively modifies the channel bandwidth depending on environment conditions. This means it automatically adjusts its bit rate according to the signal environment, enhancing both efficiency and performance. Additionally, it features automatic power control reducing power consumption at close range and increasing it when farther away to ensure optimal transmission strength. Another key feature of the VDC48 is its dynamic uplink and downlink allocation. 
This system automatically adjusts the bandwidth ratio between the master and slave units based on the actual data flow. This flexibility allows both the master and slave to handle high volumes data transfer, such as from cameras, adjust bandwidth in real time to meet the demands. In terms of the device compatibility, the VDC48 supports simultaneously operations of multiple sites of equipment. Once activated, a maximum of six pairs can operate concurrently. The system requires fixed frequency usage with a total bandwidth of 120 meg. This is managed by allocating every 20 meg to separate frequency channel, which only needs to be configured on the master station for multi-site use. It's necessary to maintain a maximum distance between master units over 5 meters for 2 watts power device and over 30 meters for 10 to 20 watts devices. The VDC48 also excels in automatic antenna selections, instantly choosing the best antenna to transit based on the current obstructions. Furthermore, it supports automatic retransmissions of data to ensure reliability and mitigate any sudden transmission errors. Along with automatic relay transmission, a backup IP is provided to prevent access issues to the web inference due to the IP configuration errors. Lastly, one of the standard features of VDC48 is extensive auto-frequency hopping capabilities within the 1350 to 1470 MHz range. Across a bandwidth of 120 MHz, it automatically scans for and avoids interference signals, hopping across up to 12 frequency bands to always select the optimal frequency. During the interference test, we set the frequency of jamming device to a specific point between 1350 to 1470 MHz, targeting the video transmission frequency and turn on the jammer. By observing the web interface, we can see the frequency hopping occurring. For example, we can set a jamming gun to the 1400 MHz and observe web visualization interface where the frequency hopping occurs in this band. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe our channel for more amazing updates. If you got any questions or are interested in the VDC48 transmission system, please don't hesitate to leave your comments below. Thank you for your watching. I'll see you in the next video.